Um, Fiona, uh, you head up a 500 strong team of uh, sales, small and medium sized business uh, salespeople, but one of your driving uh, passions here is also education and trying to encourage more kids to learn or to code. Can you tell us about the, um, the activities that you're involved in and you know what we can do more around getting more coding skills into schools and on the curriculum. Yeah, absolutely. So um, education is really in our DNA uh, as a company. Um, and the kind of outreach we do in, in education is really built a bit around the values we have as a company in terms of uh, diversity, uh, access to information, and using technology to solve some of the world's biggest problems. Um, so we, we passionately believe in technology, not only in the narrow sense of kind of engineering and wanting to produce more fantastic software hardware engineers and for more of them to be female, but we also believe these skills are going to be the key really for many disciplines in the future. Um, and so uh, we're very uh, supportive of uh, any efforts to um, build teacher capability around these skills and expose more and more students um, to, to coding with a view to, as I say, not just being engineers, but really thinking about how they could approach fashion, art, anything, design, um, using those skills. Now, the UK has already put coding on its curriculum. Um, Ireland hasn't. Uh, how, how passionately do you feel about this being done? I mean, we've just added politics as a, as a subject on the curriculum, which is interesting. But for, for economic gain and economic advantage, if kids at least have, have, a, have a baseline of coding skills into the next 20 years, I believe that would give them a huge economic advantage. How, how do you guys feel about that? Um, so from the research that we've done, and we produced a white, pa white paper a few years ago, um, and from our experience in terms of working with Trinity on professional development for teachers and our national coding competition called to code, everything we've learned um, has told us that you know it's really important that every student in the country has access to these kind of skills. Um, the white paper that we published a few years ago talked about the main barriers um, in terms of female students not picking coding, for example. And a lot of that is just their own perception of that they, they could be good at it, um, their peer group and the encouragement from uh, from parents um, and then in terms of the programs that we've run uh, for example in the call to code competition um, we've seen that um, we only we didn't have any female students in the final last year we had 15% of our finalists uh, female students this year and so it's really about changing perceptions um, and building confidence now when we think about that confidence changing perceptions and access for everyone feel it being on the curriculum really is the turnkey thing that needs to happen and um, so you know we're not responsible for policy that's the reserve of government but when we're asked you know we really feel as other countries have done uh, beyond the UK that this is the thing that's going to get maximum exposure um, for the generations to come again across all economic backgrounds as well as uh, across the male female divide.